Hi, welcome to Parametric House. In this Grasshopper tutorial, we want to optimize a path. Uh, basically, we want to go from this point to this point, but don't intersect with these circles. Uh, so the objective is to minimize the intersection and also minimize the length of this NURBS curve, which we are producing here with using the Galapagos. Uh, optimization method. So this tutorial is going to help you to understand uh, how to count the intersections, minimize that. Actually, we have to give this a negative score when uh, we have too much intersections. So as you can see here, at the first step, we have the minimum intersection, which is two, which is one circle. And as it goes further, we have more and more intersection. Uh, if we run this at the end, we're going to find uh, the best path with minimum intersection, that's actually with no intersection, and the smallest length uh, for the path. So let's get started from scratch and do this. Uh, to get started, I'm going to uh, just define two points in Rhino. This is going to be actually, for example, we want to go from here to here. Okay, uh, we can go to the Parms menu and select this point container. Uh, right click and set multiple points. Maybe we want to go from here to here. And just to show you the path, uh, if we don't have any obstacles, it's going to be if we go to the curve and select the polyline tool here. We can connect it and that's obviously the smallest and the easiest path. If we want to see the length, we can go to the curve analyzers and here we go to the length. If I just hit on two forward slashes, we will have the panel and you can see uh, this is actually the shortest uh, path we have here, but without any obstacles. Now we want to just make it a little bit more complicated and for now, what I want to do here is to go to the vector and in the grid, I'm going to use this uh, poplar 2D because it's going to make a series of random points inside a box. So the first one is the region or the rectangle. I'm going to right click here and set a rectangle just right here. Okay. Uh, the number of random points, maybe just 120. We can increase or decrease these points and also a number slider for the seed, which is the engine. Whenever you change this number, it's going to give you an, a new result. And that's it. We have those random points now. Uh, to make the circles really easy, we have to go to the curve and use this circle by plane, which is actually why you, uh, when you give a point to a plane, it's going to assume it's an XY plane. So always remember, if you give a point to a plane, it's always going to be an XY plane. So uh, we're just going to connect it here, turn off the points and just give this a number slider so we can define the circles. Okay. So obviously we want to optimize the pass when we have some problem. The problem are these obstacles. Okay, so how can we solve this? Uh, let me just right click and internalize those points so we don't need Rhino. I'm just going to get rid of these points in Rhino and we can save the grasshopper or actually we can move these points in the future if we want to get a new result. Okay, so what I want to do here is to actually assume that we have this line and we have these two points. Uh, I'm going to divide this line into a series of points, simply a division, and then move them uh, in the normal direction up and down, right? Uh, which is obviously we have to give it a number slider for each point. And after that, we can connect these points to make this NURBS curve. The start and the end doesn't move, so we just have to move the points inside the line. Uh, that's not really hard. I'm going to just bring that up. So remember that that's the shortest path. Uh, and now let's just divide it by going to, to the curve and division. We have to find the perpendicular frames. The reason we, we want to find the perpendicular frames is that we want to move it in the normal direction. So I'm going to use this perpendicular frames tool. 
and as you can see here the normal direction is going to be the y direction so i'm going to go here and go to the vector and in the plane i'm going to deconstruct these planes and now i have all of those points uh, we also have to give a number slider to the n which is the count maybe from 3 to 12 by increasing these numbers we can have uh, uh, better control on the NURBS curve, right? So for example, if you have just four, obviously you can't find the best results because the curve doesn't have uh, enough controls to move it up and down, right? So I'm going to increase that to maybe 12, uh, even more for complicated uh, problems. Okay, now that we have this, uh, we have the points, we have the Y direction, we have, just have to move them in the uh, uh, y and negative y direction right so we just search for move move these points the y direction i have to go to the math and multiply that y with a series of number sliders okay assume that it's like 12 divisions i don't want to change that for now so i'm going to give that a panel uh, obviously as you can see here we have 13 points uh, the first one and the last one doesn't have to move so we have to minus this, these two points uh, from the start and the end and what we'll have is 11 points right so I'm going to go to the parms menu and here you can see the gene pool gene pool is really great for the uh, optimization we want to use and I'm going to double click it and say I want 11 number sliders okay uh, by increasing the decimal, it's actually going to make it more complicated because it has a really fine tune of movement in the minus or plus movement, but it's going to also take uh, too much time to calculate it. So I'm just going to stick with 2 and say from minus 10 to 10. I really don't know if 10 is a good number, so what I want to do is to check it out by right clicking on the gene pool and randomizing it and see that for example a minus 10 is going to bring us here uh it's really depend it really depends on your project maybe you have to increase it to maybe minus 15 to 15 if you want to give the algorithm uh more flexibility maybe you just want to control these points here so remember that we have to give a good minus plus number for the minimum and the maximum okay before i do that just a, a trick we have to do here because we have 13 points we have to give a zero at the start and a zero at the end i'm going to put that in a number container first i'm going to give the zero then the 11 movements and again a zero that is going to give me exactly what I want. Uh, no movement for the start, no movement for the end, and then we have 11 movements for the points between the start and the end. Okay, now we are good to go, and we can give that to the multiplication, and just turn everything off. Connect those points together with a curve. So I'm going to go to the curve and use this interpolate thing and now we have a completely controllable NURBS curve which we really don't know which is the best situation or the uh, smallest path okay now that we have this we have to also check out the length of this curve is obviously by going to the curve analyzes the length it's going to be this number and it's obviously more than the shortest path but what we have to do is to use Galapagos to just optimize this because we really don't know when it's going to be the smallest path without any uh, intersections, right? So this is really important. For example, if I want to just do that manually, it's going to take a lot of time. I really don't know if that's a good uh, solution for this so i'm going to use the galapagos to get the final results okay i'm going to randomize this so i really don't have any clue my problem is really complicated i really don't know what to do so 
uh, I'm going to use the Galapagos to solve it. Okay, uh, the problem here is that even if we want to find the sh shortest path, we don't have uh, any algorithm to define the intersection. So I'm going to go to the intersect and in the physical I'm going to use a curve curve intersection. That means uh, the this curve is going to intersect with these circles. Okay, I'm going to bring it here and as you can see here it's going to give us a series of points. Basically if we have uh, like 179 circles it's going to give us 179 groups with each of them the intersection is going to give a number for example if it's this one is 2 that means it has two intersections if this one is like 0 it doesn't have any intersections this one doesn't have an intersection so most of them is going to be 0 these circles is going to give us some 2's here uh, because it's not really important which circle has the intersections I'm going to flatten this to just count the number of intersections. Again, if you don't know about what flatten or graft is, I'm going to put up a video here, which you can check it out. But for now, the number of intersections has to be a negative score. For example, if it has just two intersections, this is even better than 24. So how can we do that? We have to count the intersections by going to the sets and going to the list length. Now we have the number of intersections, right? And we also have the length of this uh, curve here, right up here. We have to actually do some a negative score with this number of intersections. So this is, okay, uh, number of intersections. And we want to give that a negative score. So what I want to do here is to make a multiplication and say each of these intersections is going to add up to this path like 1000 meters. Okay, so actually if I added this up to the length by doing um, addition at this length with this uh, multiplication, this is going to be the length with this is the actual length and this is going to be length with negative score right up here. And as you can see, when I decrease the number, for example, this is like 24,000. When I decrease the number of intersections, I'm going to get a better score. You have to just play with this. Just want to show you that 24,000 is going to go 16,000. So, whenever we decrease the number of intersections, we're going to if it if it's going to go to zero intersections, it's going to be 0 multiplied by 1000, which is actually going to be 0. And that's going to uh, don't give any addition to the actual length. So that's really great. This is a good algorithm. We can optimize it by using the Galapagos uh, components. Just go to the Parms menu and use the Galapagos components. The genome is going to be connected to things we want to change, which is actually a number slider or a gene pool. The fitness function has to be a number, so I'm going to just give that to the length with the negative score because I want to minimize this one so it gets near the actual length without any intersections. Okay, that's it. Now we just have to uh, run the optimization. I'm just going to bring that viewport up here. Zoom in. Just double click the Galapagos optimization solver. Uh, first of all, we, if we want to minimize or maximize, obviously it's going to be minimize, okay? Uh, here we have to define uh, the solver here, evolutionary solver. Okay, for now, I'm just going to explain, uh, we have a video tutorial which I've explained the Galapagos uh, optimization method, but for now, what is important when we have lots of 
solutions and we don't know which one is the best is to increase the population. The population is actually the number of solutions it's going to produce and sort them from the smallest intersection uh, and the maximum intersection. So I'm going to increase that to maybe something like 200. Each step is going to check out 200 different solutions. The initial boost is really, really important. And the reason here is that because at the first step, when you have more solutions, it's actually uh, more opportunity or uh, it's going to hit a better solution than if you just have like, for example, if I have only 10 solutions, uh, it's not going to reach any good uh, way than I have 1000 solution, right? So when I have 1000 different polylines or NURBS curve, it's obviously going to find one or two uh, of those best solutions and it's going to optimize even faster. So the initial boost is really important. I'm going to put that uh, this to 200 and maybe increase that to, to four. So it's going to start with 800 uh, solution at the first step and at the second step till the end, it's going to just go with 200 iterations. Now I'm just going to go to the solver here and click on this one because it's going to also show you all of the different solutions in Rhino viewport. If you don't want to see anything, maybe it's uh, slowing down. The algorithm is really complicated. So for now, I'm going to put that here and start the solver. So if you just take a look, it's going to produce different results and it's going to be like 800 at the first step. And if we go here, we can see it's getting different length with negative score, the number of intersections, and that's going to help us to get the final results. Most important part is that producing different NURBS curve is going to be the best way. Okay, I'm going to stop and start after I'm getting the first step, and then I'm going to explain it. Okay, now the first step has been finished. It's like 800 different solutions. If you see here, I have the worst solution. If I just click at the end and reinstate, I can see the result when I stop the solver, okay? So it's like 40,000. I think it's something like uh, 30 or 40 intersections. If I go up, you can see it's like 10,000. So maybe it found a way with just one intersection. Uh, if I just let it run like 200 steps, each step, uh, we're going to get even better results. So I'm going to stop and show you when it reaches at the end, and then we're going to talk about the solutions. So as you can see here, we have two intersections right here. So how can we solve that? The best way you can do that is to uh, help that point by moving it around. For example, for this one, I'm just going to move it here. and get rid of that one. And as you can see, I'm getting better results. For now, what I want to do here is to go to the Galapagos editor and run it again. Because it has some clues that this one, especially for this part, was the solution, it's going to find uh, more solutions around that. So here I'm going to run it again and show you the final results. Uh, okay, now let's stop this solver and check this out. So the first uh, way we helped the algorithm was this little improvement here. But as you can see here, it started with 176 and then we, it, it has like 10,000 because of those intersections it had and like that. So as it go further in the 13th step and so on, you can see it's always going to start like with 176 and optimize that further. And now we just have this like 175, which is the best it found for this solution. Uh, this is a good example of how you can use the genetic algorithm to optimize a path. Uh, if I want to change this line into a curve, we can simply do that by going to, let's just first start with a curve container. I'm going to connect this polyline to a curve and give it to the perpendicular frame to the length here and just get rid of this one. And now I'm just going to draw a curve in Rhino. So I'm going to just say from the top, I want to draw a curve and I want to start from here 
and just reach here and I have to go through this path uh, I'm going to give this uh, less number of intersections smaller circles maybe just even more yeah for example this one is also another way you can use that uh, to optimize the solution so I'm going to give that to the curve hide this and internalize this one let's check this out it's not working so is it right in the y direction because it's going up and down so this time we have to go in the x direction so I'm going to use this x direction turn this up and off and go to the top and now you can see it's actually the same so remember that you can even increase the number of division maybe you can just say 20 it's going to give you 21 minus 2 at the start and the end is going to be 19 so I'm going to just increase that to 19 or randomize and it's a little bit too much so I'm going to start with minus 5 to 5 that's going to help us to not really move that too much that's it it's going to help us to even maybe move it for further okay and I'm just going to make this even smaller and less points just to show you a fast solution you can do that and I'm going to run it again and show you the final results after we get the uh, solution I'm going to minimize that and run it again okay now I'm going to stop the solver and as you can see here uh, it found like 199 uh, and if we run it further we're going to get even better results so uh, at the first step you can see it has like two intersections it even found the worst solution which is obviously lots of intersections as it goes further it's going to optimize and get the final results uh, okay that was the tutorial of how you can use the Galapagos solver to optimize a path between a series of obstacles by counting the intersections and giving giving it a negative score and uh, adding it up to the actual uh, length we want or a score we want to get the best results and if you want to even learn this further we have to look this example file a little bit more advanced on a surface with obstacles uh, a random obstacles on it and finding the shortest path from one point to another and then we just move that on a surface there are some challenges we have here uh, the shortest path has to be the geodesic uh, curve uh, the movement has to be in the on the surface so it has some little challenges and it's a good example file if you want to learn this uh, optimization even further thanks for watching i hope this tutorial was useful remember to subscribe to our channel because we have weekly tutorials and like this video so more users even get notified and I'll see you next time bye